As the most populous nation on Earth, China is set to become a lead player in stem cell medicine. For it harnesses China's most abundant and valuable resource, its people. It now has some of the world's largest banks of cord blood and embryonic tissue. The West still spends more money on stem cell research, but the Chinese are already using stem cell treatments on humans. Hal Burrows is one of the growing number of foreigners traveling to China to receive stem cell therapy. When I told people that I was going to go to China, they were like, why? Why China of all places? Well, that's where it's on, that's where it's being offered. The other half of the people would say, oh, you're going to get ripped off. It's a fake. And I couldn't understand their mentality, but they're not in my body. They're an able-bodied person, seeing that I'm going to spend twenty or thirty thousand dollars, go to another country for um, an operation um, for a technology that's unproven, and in our country is really downplayed. Twenty years ago, Hal was in a road accident. He was initially diagnosed as quadriplegic. After some degree of recovery, he was left paralyzed from the chest down. 20 years I've been pushing my body as hard as I can to keep going, keep going. You can't imagine what it's like to look at your arms or your hands or your legs and wish them to move, and they don't. It's like the cord has just been cut, and you're looking at these things that used to take you everywhere, and they don't move. You don't even feel them. So it's quite a shock. I was completely prepared to be a guinea pig. I didn't wait at all. Once I found out I had the chance to come here and that the stem cells were available, I was here. Hal will spend the next month living on the hospital's 14th floor alongside a fraternity of other foreigners who've come seeking the Chinese miracle. From spinal cord injury to cerebral palsy, Parkinson's disease, stroke, and brain trauma, people from around the world are coming to China for the hope that stem cells offer. Alvarez suffered a severe brain injury when he drowned in a swimming pool at the age of two. After a year with no sign of improvement, his family have traveled to China to see if stem cells can help. Our life was basically normal until, until Bo had an accident. It was a pretty severe accident. Uh, he, um, a babysitter was watching him for about an hour and a half and she fell asleep. He was found two houses away from our house in a, in a pool. The prognosis for, for near drowning like this, it's, it's very poor if, when it's this severe. And we were told that uh, this is what we have, learn to deal with it. And I was actually told by one physician to consider stop, to stop feeding bone. I was told that three days after the injury. We pretty much, since the accident, we've been all over uh, getting treatment for Bo to try and get him better. And uh, that's why we're here, all f five of us in China, you know. If it wasn't for the accident, we would never be here. My name is David Aldrich. I'm from Delray Beach, Florida. I had an accident uh, four years ago. I uh, slip and fall off a boat and what in Palm Beach, and I fell in the water, hit my head, and uh, several, I bruised my spinal cord at C34, and also I had a near drowning. Uh, I uh, drowned and was brought back to life by CPR, and also after my accident, I became blind. I had no vision, vision whatsoever. 
David has traveled to China with his family, having exhausted all options available in his home country. I wish, you know, that it would not have up in politics and legislation that we be able to take advantage of the technology in America that's available here. China's baby boom provides a priceless opportunity. A gift from one generation to the next of precious life-giving stem cells. blood found within the umbilical cord has an incredibly high concentration of stem cells. So cord blood is collected after delivery in many hospitals throughout Asia. Because stem cells are harvested from the umbilical cord after the baby has been born, they are considered to be adult cells. Stem cells purified from cord blood appear to be extremely flexible. Just how flexible is surprising even to the scientists. So far, they've been manipulated not just into becoming blood cells, but also bone, liver, heart muscle, and brain cells. One small unit of cord blood contains as many stem cells as a liter of bone marrow. Purified stem cells are stored in cryogenic freezers for future use. One day we may reach into this freezer whenever we want a cure for degenerative disease. After all, cord blood stem cells are already being used in China. doctor who trained in Sweden and Canada before returning to China. He has set up a facility to treat patients with cord blood stem cells. We are focused on stem cell treatment in with central nervous system diseases. We have treated about 800 patients in total. We have seen many, many uh, improvements. When you want to apply the stem cells to, uh, to human, uh, you have to have very good quality control of the cells. Uh, you have to avoid any contamination. But also we will add different uh, growth factors to help the stem cell to differentiate to the uh, neurons. Yeah. And many doctors think the stem cell is not safe. If they have the chance to follow the, the patients that has been treated with stem cell uh, cells, uh, then they will change their mind. medicine has always followed a different path from the West. Animal parts are often prescribed, and the regenerative power of blood, tissue, even embryos, has been acknowledged in traditional Chinese medicine for millennia. But Chinese medicine is also characterized by its experimental approach. Treatment is improvised through trial and error on the patient looking for results in the individual, rather than following a determined course. This is why some believe that stem cell science has bypassed the clinical trial phase in most of Asia. But for stem cell medicine to be effective in the long run, scientists stress that regulated research and clinical evidence is essential. On the tiny island republic of Singapore, stem cell science is also driving the biotech boom. The government-built Biopolis is home to some of the biggest names in the biomed business. And it's this high-tech hub that's attracting scientists from around the world. Dr. Alan Coleman, the scientist renowned for cloning Dolly the sheep, has relocated to Singapore, where he is now pursuing embryonic stem cell research. Researchers should be pursuing all these options simultaneously because there are advantages to embryonic stem cells. There are also a, a, a major advantages to using adult stem cells. One of the uh, great advantages of working with embryonic stem cells essentially is they, they go on forever. Embryonic stem cells emerge in the first seven days of the embryo's development 
They have the power to divide and become all the cells of the human body. However, removing the whole of the inner cell mass from an embryo means it no longer has the potential to become a human being. And this is why embryonic stem cell research has become the subject of moral debate. The issue of um, whether it's uh, moral to use um, embryos for the type of research I do, I'm comfortable with that. I'm comfortable on the basis mainly uh, that we are using uh, spare, if you like, uh, IVF embryos, embryos which are destined for destruction. And we feel that the use that we want to put them to is a worthwhile and a, a defensible use that's curing uh, illness in humans. I think embryonic stem cells will have their day, but it won't be today. They're lagging behind adult stem cells because less is known about their behavior. But even here in Singapore, where there is a liberal approach to both adult and embryonic stem cell research, scientists warn of rushing treatments from the laboratory to human patients. It, this is an area where there is scope for doing considerable damage to people and um, you know we we're, we're exploiting a biology which we've yet to fully understand and I think under those circumstances we have to do it in a very careful way however in China stem cells are already a commercial reality for humans adult stem cells at least Burroughs has been receiving an injection of adult stem cells from cord blood every week for the past month. While many scientists believe it's premature to use stem cells on patients, China is happy to do business. Capitalizing on this opportunity will allow tremendous economic gain. The Chinese government expects biotechnology to generate a staggering 60% of economic growth by 2020. Regenerative medicine will bring a whole new meaning to the phrase made in China. The first injection I got, I felt a little tingle in my arm. Travel up my arm. And then I felt it travel up my leg and up through my trunk. The first things I noticed after my second injection were that my hands got really warm. Just my hands. They got really warm. It was almost as if like they were growing. It was, really, it was a strange feeling. Um, and right after that, I started to be able to do open and close my hands. And then I was able to make a fist for the first time in 20 years. Actually, I'll get my sixth injection today. 